Jesus said in Revelation chapter 1 and verse number 18, He said, I am He that was dead and am alive. And He said, Behold, I am alive forevermore. And he said, I have the keys to both death and hell. Yes. I'm glad I'm not trusting in some kind of phony yes. salvation. I'm glad I'm not trusting in a denomination. Yes. I'm glad I'm not trusting in my mom and daddy's faith. Yes. I'm glad I'm not trusting in my own ability to keep myself saved. Yes. I'm not trusting in how good or how bad I am. But I'm trusting in the finished work yes. of the Lord Jesus Christ to get me to heaven. Yes. Why is it? He did it right the very first time. I can't even get it right on time. Thousands of times. I'm glad he didn't have to do it but one time. And he did it right. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Amen. Now let me get to the message. <laughs> Preach on. Uh, number one, the fact that he did it right the first time tells me that their sacrificing is finished in verse number 12. I want us to read this. It says, But this man, after he had offered for, offered one sacrifice for sins forever, he sat down on the right hand of God. Sacrificing is finished. In the Old Testament economy, they had sacrifices they had to perform. They could offer a, a goat, which was given on the day of, on the day of atonement. But for the remission, there was two goats. And then they could give an oxen. Uh, you could give a turtle dove. And they sacrificed. And some people say, well, why did they kill animals? Why did they have to kill animals? I'll tell you why they had to kill animals. They had to kill animals because God demanded blood for sin. God demanded blood for sin. And God still demanded blood for yes, sin. You're right. And blood was the only way, the only thing that satisfied God when it comes to the sin of man. That's how much God hates it. Yes, he had to right. see death because there was sin in the world. Come a friend, those sacrifices was continually. Those sacrifices was all the time. Inside the tabernacle in the outer court, there was the brazen altar. And that is where the sacrifices was performed. And they were burnt there as a sweet-smelling Savior unto God. And they were sacrificed for the sins of the world. But there's one thing about those sacrifices there. There was a continual remembrance of that sin. That sacrifice that was done in the Old Testament economy by that animal shedding its blood, it purged the sin, but it did not purge the conscience. They were still a conscience on their mind of their own doing that they had done. But this man, when he gave himself a sacrifice for us all, he not only purifies that sinner from sin, but he does it as concerning conscience as well. Amen. That's why I'm not worried anymore about the sin that I've done in my formal life. I'm a fool I got saved. Wow. I've done a lot of wicked things and bad things. And some of you did as well. And some of you, you messed up. You've done some bad stuff in your life. Some of you, if we knew what, what you'd done, we'd be ashamed of you being in this building. We'd probably all be embarrassed if everybody saw everything that we done. Have a friend, aren't you glad that we can not only put our head at night when we go to bed, we can come to church and put a smile on our face because our conscience is clean. And now we're not guilty anymore. Sure, the devil tries to throw it up in your face, but sacrifice is finished. There's no more sacrifice for sin. He not only pierces your heart, he purifies our mind. And it's good to know I've got a clear conscience because he did it right the first time. Amen. 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 I was talking to Caleb yesterday in the pig stand. She went with me to take her. And we replaced Devo with dirt yesterday. <laughs> and we was in the pig stand down there. And I had, a, me and her, which me and Lindsay go a lot together. I get to talk to Lindsay. But I got to have some good one-on-one -on -one time with my oldest daughter in that, in that pig line. We had a good time. Didn't see a pig. We heard Brian Almond miss too. We got to hear him shoot miss. <laughs> uh, we, got to hear, we got to hear his boy shoot miss. And we got to hear others that saw them, but we didn't see them. But anyway, I was sitting there and I was talking to her. And I was telling her a lot about our family and my life that she never knew. Some good, some bad. She's getting to the age where she needs to know about the real stuff. And I was telling her about her daddy and her mama and her grandpa. 
and her other grandpas, and her grandmas, and her aunts that are mean. <laughs> so I got to tell her about me and that God saved me and what I, some of the things I used to be. And I said, never was a real bad person, but I said, honey, you need to look around and see what God has done. I'm telling you this so you can see what God has done in your daddy's life. Not me, but God. And I got to talking about how right after I got saved, I was the first boy I knew hope that I knew of that had really gotten born again. Barry remembers this. Brian remembers that. Brian remembers I was at his house and everybody else's house trying to tell them about Jesus that I grew up in that community. I wasn't a preacher at the time. I was just born again. I was fire for God. And I wanted to tell everybody how to go to heaven. I mean, that's all I wanted to do. I was knocking on doors. And I remember Brenda, Barry and Neer's mom, told me when he got saved. She was so excited. I said, well, I ain't going to tell him. I ain't going to call him. I ain't going to talk to him. Because the boys I grew up with, I was the only one that had been born again. None of the none of the others had ever been born again that I knew of. And she said, well, he's coming to see you. Barry was driving a truck, I think, for Clark at the time, Fort Lift. And he'd been down in Mississippi, and I'd heard about him getting saved. I didn't think more about it. And we was living with my daddy down there in the mobile mansion on the dirt road in New Hope. And uh, that was down there when we used to watch the rat trip the mouth trap. Y'all ever had fun doing that? That is a lot of fun. It really is. Especially when you got two or three there, you get to choose and take bets on which one's going to get it first, you know. And uh, we lived with Daddy for a while down there, and that was before he married Wanda, and uh, then they got married after we moved out, and he blamed us for him getting married ever since then. So, I woke up one Saturday morning about 7 o'clock and heard a diesel truck coming up the dirt road, and I said, who in the world is that? And Julie was with Barry. And I think Julie, Julie, wasn't you with Barry at the time, I think? And here they come floating in my driveway, and Barry got out and had tears in his eyes. This is on a Saturday morning. And if there's any time I'm not spiritual, this is a morning. This is a Saturday morning. You know if you're spiritual on a Saturday morning and you're thinking about God, you've got the goods. Amen. Knocked on the door, it was Barry. He had to talk to me. Tell me he got saved. Big old crocodile tears. Right, I didn't just say that to him about it. He had to come tell me. Yeah. And I was like, well, hallelujah, ain't that wonderful to know? Ain't that good to know? Me and Barry was talking about Barry. I know some things Barry's done in his past. He knows some things that I've done in my past. And we all know some things about things we've done in our past. And one of the good things about being born again is I don't have to worry about what I did before I got yes. I've got a clean slate. Hallelujah. And if you're here this morning and you're lost, Jesus done it right the first time. He's no more sacrificing for sin. He'll not only forgive you of your sin, but he'll clear your conscience. Amen. You can leave out of here and not even worry about anything you've ever done this morning. Isn't that wonderful? The other day I come home. My wife, she's come home. And I tried to do a lot of things good, clean up the house. She said, you did not bring the trash can in from the road. <laughs> and I should have. I was going to, but she had noticed that. That's one of her pet peeves is she'll put the trash out, but I need to bring the trash back in. Sometimes I try to thank her and take it out and put it in, but I don't. She does a whole lot more than I do anyway. But what little bit I do, I am very proud of. Amen, man? <laughs> We are very proud of what little bit we do, and we want it to be noticed. Amen, men? Amen. It don't matter if it's putting a spoon in the dishwasher, we want it to be noticed. You're right. Amen, men? You're right. Amen. Shame on That's exactly right. <laughs> I am in trouble. soup for lunch today because I probably wouldn't get no dinner and if I did I'd be afraid to eat it for bond <laughs> you know what a lot of times our wrong is often remembered and brought back up to us people have a hard time forgetting bad boy I need to suffer when somebody does you wrong it just tires you to guts that's why some of us in here on depression medicine, anxiety medicine, you think you're going crazy. Some of you are. <laughs> but the reason you're doing that is because you can't get over what somebody has done to you. That's true, preacher. 
And you will not forget what they've done. You refuse to let it die and you remember it continually and you won't drop the subject. You, you like put them in each your life. You go to pay them each your life. You see that person at work or in a Walmart or a grocery store and a knot winds up in your gut and you taste vomit in your mouth. Anybody ever like it? Listen, we've done a lot more to Jesus than ever anybody else has ever done to you and I. Right. It's a wonder when he sees you and I, he don't get sick to his stomach when he looks at us. At the way we've done him wrong, and the way we turned our back on him, and we was enemies of God. But blessed be the name of God because he did it right the first time. Hallelujah. He don't remember a thing you and I have ever done. He's forgot about it all. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says right here, in, the book, in, in verse number 17 and 18 it says, And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. <laughs> that means he's forgot about it. So that means, honey, you need to forget about everything I've already said this morning. And not hold a grudge, okay? Please, thank you. I appreciate that. Boy, I'll tell you what, I'm glad my wife is too close to God she don't hold a grudge. Amen. <laughs> thank God that he did it right the first time. I might not be doing it right, but I know he's doing it right. You think about all the sins. Do what, brother Wayne? Uh, go to there and get that sign? Yeah, that's the truth. Yeah, I need to get that sign. Somebody gave me a sign this morning that said, You can't fix stupid. Maybe I need to bring that up to you. <laughs> I'm living proof that you can't fix it. <laughs> Think about some of the things you've done. I'm telling you, some of us in here have been wicked. Mm -hmm. Amen, we need to always come to church and look strong. Right. Carry the Bible. Thank you, dear kids. Now, we come to church, and you know what happens? Once we get saved, for some reason, we get saved, we get to church, we think we got it all figured out. Oh, we've got it narrowed down. We can get a holier than thou attitude. We forget that our filthy, rotten, nasty sin, and the only difference between a saved person and a lost person is the grace of God. That is it. So we get to be. And we stick our nose up when somebody does something wrong, we look down on them. We stomp our feet on them. Somebody messes up and we start gossiping. <laughs> Did you hear what so and so done? And then the way we cover it up is we'll say, now, I don't believe in gossiping, but I want you to pray. Help me pray for yeah. somebody. <laughs> would you, I need you to help me pray about it with you in a situation. Would you please help me do that? And they said, I really don't like talking about it. And then you're on the other line. They've done got you want the baby. So, oh, come on, tell me. I won't tell them how. <laughs> oh, you, I'm keeping a secret. Hogwash. Ain't nobody in here to keep a secret. Amen. And I can tell you one I know for sure can't keep a secret. That's a Baptist. <laughs> yeah. Let me have to tell you the best way to keep secrets is don't tell nobody. Amen. If you don't want it ever told, don't tell us so. And so we'll start that gossip line because somebody messed up. We forget the whole time how wicked and vile we used to be. Right. And we ain't always been there. Right. Right. And you ain't got no halo on your head. Right. And there ain't nobody in here any better than anybody else. Yeah. And hey, we all deserve to be in hell with our back broke. And the reason we ain't is because he did it right. He did it right. He did it right. You've done it wrong, but thank God he done it right. Amen. There's no more sacrifice for sin. Now all of our sins. It's kind of like that song. What sin are you talking about? Amen. I don't remember them anymore. From the book of life, they're all gone now. I don't remember them anymore. I remember the day when I was sinful. I can't remember the rest of that song, <laughs> but it sounded real good, and he rescued me. 
from the burden of sin and strife. And now with God thank Him day after day, people moving my guilt and shame. It seems I can almost hear them. <laughs>